Hey everybody, this is Ernie Hatmaker, and it's been very, very gloomy out. Um, about 10 miles away, there was a tornado. Um, it's been very windy. In fact, some of my hanging bottles had fallen, and they were on pretty good. Um, but we didn't really get any damage here, so I'm really grateful for that. Um, what I've been doing is trying to um, protect our you know, garden area from deer, you know, that might, you know, have lost a little bit of extra grazing area because out there, um, along that tree line back there, that's the river bottoms. Um, the river kind of backs up to, to, uh, where we are and it runs all along that tree line and it goes about, um, a mile underground uphill <laughs> so anyway it kind of does that and the deer like to hang out in the river especially when it's hot they actually go in to the water down at the river bottoms and they'll just hang out there um, the majority of the day they'll eat some of the underwater plants but mostly they just hang out in the water and you know who doesn't like to swim when it's hot right so what we don't want them to do is, oh, well, let me get a snack for a second because now, right now, we're like the closest garden that doesn't have a ton of dogs here because all our dogs are at the other property. So, you know, we don't want them to come up here. And I'm pretty much all out of my onion and garlic spray. Um, when the wind's not blowing, the little windmills don't turn. So we got to think of how to get the human and dog smell up. So dropping dog here, we, we bring our dogs down from time to time, let them do a little um, watering. <laughs> and today, because it's been raining so much and all that may be washed away, I've put up fabric softener sheets like this guy. So anything I could do to just kind of keep the human smell, that's what I've been doing. So I'm also going to show you what I've been doing so far here. Um, and this is the newest bed, which is um, it's part of the wild area that I'm going to have corn in. But I decided to do a couple of milling mounds and there's Lady Godiva pumpkin down here. So, why would I put Lady Godiva pumpkin next to a pretty wildly sprinkled corn patch? Each of these three flat patches, um, this middle one here is about two feet wide, and the rest um, are um, one and a half feet. And that's just because, you know, I want the corn to go grow really close together. So I made deeper grooves around so it's easier to fertilize it. And hopefully the, the millens can uh, cash in on some of that too. I keep calling them millens or pumpkins. Lady Godiva pumpkins. Yeah. All these new leaves are coming out. And to say I'm, I'm getting pretty happy about it. So, moving on, I've got Sunflower Row, which we have not finished the path all the way around. But you see my little fabric softener sheets. They're just kind of stuck in here. Look at that. All the ladybugs are hiding from the weather. Can you see them in there? Yep, that's where the ladybugs are hiding. Um, they're staying warm. They're really not moving, but that's where a lot of them are all over this property. So, if you notice, the sunflowers over here are about a foot taller than the sunflowers right next to them. And we've pretty much reasoned the sunflowers over here... Um, catch that runoff you know like like we said before um because it's a slight raised heel over there and since they catch it first maybe they're getting more nutrients even though we fertilize them the same so now that those are bigger they're also throwing shade during the hottest part of the day to these so these are just going to be a little slower so anyway we 
go through Sunflower Row. And the reason we're going to go through is because I just want to show you this. Um, we've put these pallets out and they're going to be raised. Um, they're, th they're three high. They're a little bit longer than the ones that we put out at first. And they're also a little heavier. Um, they're all heat treated. Um, no chemical use. No chemical spills on them. Um, just kind of, you know, check to make sure we're not about to kill off our plants. There's burlap underneath them. We have burlap squares because burlap is more likely to um, disintegrate better into the, the ground um, than regular landscape fabric. And we're kind of looking at never moving these and eventually this becoming raised beds because, you know, pallets are going to break down eventually. Now, here are some of my nasturtium seeds are coming up in there, but these are crookneck squash. We have tried to plant unsuccessfully three times seeds of crookneck squash. I've only got one seed that's made it without being chewed up, and it's coming up too. These are strawberries, and they're starting to bloom and. I pinch the blooms and they'll grow about an inch and then they'll bloom again. Right there is the road and right there is where we saw, I mean literally right there, um, a copperhead. He actually got run over before we could get to him. Hey look, there's a cat. That's not our cat, but it's a cat. I'm hoping that this cat may be is attracted to mice too and is coming over but chances are it's probably just coming over to kill the birds <laughs> and I don't I don't think very highly of wild stray cats but anyway so a copperhead was coming across somebody had run over him but he was headed straight for these a-frames here where we've been noticing mouse damage so I wouldn't have stopped a copperhead but I would have certainly tried to keep an eye on him um, so at least, you know, we know where he is because right now, without all the dirt in them, these pallets are pretty attractive shelters for snakes. And that's the downside to pallet gardening is, you know, you'll have a shelter for them until you put dirt in them. Uh, the snakes don't really want to live there unless, you know, they have freedom to move around. Um, they, they wouldn't mind settling under mulch, but once the dirt's established, I've noticed the snakes around here would rather hunt than just hang out. What do you want, kitty? Who do you belong to? Uh-oh. Don't get run over. Don't get... <laughs> he hightailed it out of here. He hurt the car. He was already safe, and he ran back across the road. So anyway... My greens are starting to come up. You can see that we've been working really hard on pulling the grass and keeping the grass and weeds down with great success. And this is the onion and greens um, plot here. And you can see the corn is doing awesome. It's, it's pretty much all up except in a couple of spots. The beans are starting to come up in between and in the midst, I have not seen any signs of the squash, which is really odd that I have not seen signs of it yet. And I'm starting to wonder if they didn't get dug up. You know what I mean. Maybe the squash got dug up. Nope, as soon as I said that, I saw one. <laughs> Just one. Anyway, since we've already hopped across the dirt, And into the mulch, you can see that I've got some um, Swiss chard from this winter that's still growing. There's not a lot left because we do eat this stuff. We don't just grow it to be growing it. We, we've actually eaten it. Um, I had a couple of melons in these mounds here where I have strawberries. Strawberries are mostly down on the other end. And hopefully we can trail them this way. Um... But yeah, I have some melon mounds and my melons didn't, um, they didn't make it through the first day of intense heat. They were just sprouts and they pretty much 
fried. I probably should have shaded them, but I didn't think about it. So I'm going to either plant some more or transplant some of my sprouts that I'm growing in the house. Oh look, there is more squash. Look at that. My squash is coming up. I guess I'm just not looking close enough. Yeah, it's, it's coming up between here. That is awesome. So yeah, chances are I'm just blind. So anyway, back to the tour. Um, this is what it looks like from the little Swiss chard bucket, which is basically the end of the mulch path. I'm hoping, I'm hoping to take the mulch path from, if you can see it, Sunflower Row in front, well, in front of and between the two different types of pallets, the A-frames and the flat beds. You can see my little fabric softener sheet in with these little tomatoes. My nasturtium is coming up. Um, my squash is coming up. It's also being chewed up. <laughs> um, and that's because, oh wow, something even tried to eat some nasturtium. They don't usually like the nasturtium. I'll just tell you now, the mice didn't like it. But these squash and nasturtium mixes seem to be working. I need to get that cup. That cup was going to be a, a planter. Um, you see the holes in my in my beans. I've already taken care of that, I believe. I hope. Um, I put um, another little dose of neem oil and orange and peppermint oil there. So we'll go through trellis and we'll go around that will meet eventually I think I told you that before all of these are store-bought Bonnie Arkansas traveler tomatoes this is the flat panel this isn't the arch this is the flat and there's a couple of fake morning glory And then hopefully that path will meet. <laughs> it's it's pretty chilly out here right now. This is all grass I've plucked and I'm just letting it get kind of wet and disgusting so that it can go to the compost. Somebody threw a paper in there. Anyway, we're back to the TPs and there's one uh bunch of lavender and I'm gonna take the bricks from around this one too um, we just wanted those beds to be established first this is cabbage that I've shown you before 
next to the mint where the uh, stink bugs were the last time. Um, we've been getting more bug predators in. Um, I'm waiting on the stink bug predators that look like, I mean, they're stink bugs too, but um, they have horns instead of, you know, smooth body. But anyway, we're just going to take these cabbages out because they are the same age as these cabbages, which are forming heads. And so we don't want to waste resources like that. Now here you can see I have put another fabric softener sheet. And these are also Arkansas Travelers. But these are seeds from um, last year. And I've actually stolen some of the tags from the Arkansas Travelers that are at the uh <laughs> the trellises so that i'd remember what they were but i didn't expect them to survive because i didn't cover them up during the ice storm and they did survive so woohoo um more grass this actually has epsom salt in it um and once it breaks down a little bit more i'll put it into the the compost trash can these are just tomatoes and oh this pepper has a flower But tomatoes and peppers waiting to be planted. Solo cups and reused, you know, thing on my bobbers. These are Cherokee purples that I planted, but I'm using a Cherokee purple um, tag from a Cherokee purple that I put somewhere else. <laughs> I reuse things. Um, they're store bought, but I reuse them. These are sunflowers, and they were going to replace sunflowers that may not have made it. So I'm probably going to uh, leave one in this bucket. I grew one in, or actually, I grew several in these two and a half gallon buckets, but they do a lot better in the five gallons. Swiss chard is coming up despite the grass on the corners. There's a snail, or a slug, that's been eating my greens. Here, have some Epsom salt. I hate that you guys had to see that, but you can clearly see that um, these greens are under attack. And this is just... Um, a little bit of orange oil and peppermint oil which the sun's not out or I'd be a little more worried about the oil you know this this late in the day it's about um, 730 and the Sun would usually be really high in the sky these are Cherokee purple this is a better bush hybrid tomato that I got from the big box store. Um, it already had its little trellis on it and it was already top heavy and every time the wind blew, every time, it would fall over. So it's just kind of sitting in this bucket. I'm thinking nature has duped me and has put marigold lookalikes in with all of my plants here. Look at that deal. And cilantro is all in one little bunch over there. All right, I've still got this bush nasturtium, more cilantro. I've got sage that I bought next to sage that I had seed for. I've got my catnip and all that other good stuff. We have also figured out that this is a... Um, it's not really a tree, it's more of a vining shrub, and we found a lot of it in the woods, and I think that that's what was in our wildflower mix. So, um, 
yeah, I might be doing a video on that later to, to, you know, just not necessarily warn people, but tell people that, you know, to look at the back of those boxes when it says 30% wildflower seed, just to kind of be curious what the other 70% might be. Gray zucchini seed in here. I think it's gray and yellow mix that's in this soil um, and this pallet's raised up pretty high now the reason um, I've got it in the pallets instead of in the, the bed side and yes I understand that these things are gonna grow but hopefully they heap over the side and can trail out and hopefully I can catch them in time and trail them out around it